Greetings one and all and welcome to another Decorative Games YouTube playing. Today we have another um, consumer friendly kind of video because well we are going to take a look at a um, modern but not so modern GPU uh, that is the um, RX 5500 XT which uh, we have in front of us the model from uh, Sapphire this is the uh, Nitro Plus version from Sapphire, so it is the same card, but well, it has some uh, factory uh, overclock to it because, uh, well, it does. And uh, well, Sapphire is pretty cool while making some, uh, well, old ATI cards and now AMD, but um, sure. The question is with um, GPU prices going up, people keep telling that GPU prices are coming down, kind of. The uh, entry-level GPUs, sure, still we are talking about uh, 300 euro dollars or more for a entry. Oops, uh, entry-level GPU, and I say for those who want to game at um, 1080p with uh, high settings, which is um, just fine. I'm uh, one of those guys who um, doesn't really understand why you have to go for um, ultra settings or um, epic or nightmare, whatever the name is. Because, well, if you can't appreciate a game for uh, what it is, and you are just looking about um, graphics fidelity and whatnot, ah, it's not the right way to uh, play a game. And I blame this on the industry, on those who make the games and on those who buy and play the games, that means us. So, um, yeah, I think that if you want to game at 1080p, high settings, with or without um, image resolution scaling techniques, whatever, do you have to spend that kind of money? Uh, well, I think not. You can grab on the second-hand market for around uh, 100 of your euro dollars, this particular model model belongs to a friend of mine, and uh, he got it from he got it for uh, ninety two euro dollars, and those ninety two are with shipping and uh, insurance in case something happens to it. So ninety two euro dollars for a uh, oldish GPU, eight gigabytes of VRAM and whatnot, and uh, we are going to put this to the test in twenty twenty three again. If you want to game at 1080p, which is fine for me. If you want to game with high settings, again, which is fine. If you want to use or not some uh, image upscaling, sure, we are going to put this thing to the test. And, uh, well, check it out if you do really need to uh, spend 300 euro dollars or more. Or if you can grab a $100 card on the second-hand market. And uh, just be fine with it. So uh, yeah, we are going to take at uh, we're going to take a look at a bunch of numbers because that's what you gotta do. A bunch of graphics and whatnot. And uh, sure, as usual, we are going to take a look at a few games, but we are going to keep it simple this time. The purpose of this video isn't to compare this GPU with others, but to look how well it stands in today's gaming. For that, I'm going to put it alone on the screen where we have two bars and numbers. The top bar is for native resolution, meaning that the game is rendered at 1080p. And the bottom bar shows performance with the FSR set to quality or, in games which don't use that designation, render resolution is set to 75%. Let's start things off with Borderlands 3, which is known to be an AMD title, 1080p, High settings, this is a DirectX 12 game, and uh, at uh, native resolution, we get an average of uh, 63 frames per second, and uh, with uh, upscale on, we get an average of uh, 88 frames per second, which is uh, a gain of around 40%. Next, we have Control, 1080p, again, high settings, and uh, this one is known for being a uh, NVIDIA title, it was a showcase for uh, RTX, and uh, at native resolution, we get an average of uh, 46 frames per second, so uh, it is uh, off that uh, 60 frames barrier. And uh, with upscale technologies, we go up to uh, 73 frames per second on average, uh, which is a gain of around 
The next game on the list is Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, at native resolution we get an average of 43 frames per second which was uh, kind of surprising to get this number on a uh, very demanding game and uh, with FSR set to quality we get uh, 59 frames per second on average so right there on that uh, 60 frames per second barrier which means a 37% uh, gain. The next game is a new one, Dead Island 2, again 1080pi settings. With native resolution we get an average of 53 frames per second. And with FSR set to quality, numbers go up to 66 frames per second, gaining around 30%. The next game is Death Stranding, again 1080pi settings, native resolution, 83 frames per second on average. Pretty much playable, we don't really need any uh, upscale technology here, but uh, again, with FSR set to quality, frames per second go up to uh, 108, so uh, this is a gain of around 30% uh, again. Next game on the list is Doom Eternal 1080p Nightmare Settings, and with native resolution we get around 139 frames per second, which is not playable at all, as we all know. And with upscale set to 75%, we get an average of 160 frames per second, gaining around 16%. The next game is F1 2022 1080pi settings, native resolution 136 frames per second on average, and with upscale at 75%, 137. So F1 22 doesn't really give a crap about uh, upscale technologies. Unless, of course, you are using uh, ray tracing where performance would uh, go down. And if you care, this is a uh, gain of around 0.7%. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of difference. The next game is GTA 5, which apparently is still a uh, relevant game nowadays. 1080p, i settings, the only DirectX 11 game on the list, native resolution. We get around 157 frames per second on average. And with upscale set to 75%, we get around... What's the point? Because, well, if you're not enjoying the game at 157 frames per second, uh, you probably got issues. So uh, let's move to the next one. The next one is Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p-i settings, native resolution. We get around 70 frames per second on average, which is pretty playable. And uh, with the uh, FSR set to uh, favor quality, numbers go up to uh, 100 frames per second on average, gaining around uh, 43%. Next game is uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again 1080p i settings, native resolution, we get around 77 frames per second on average, and with upscale set to 75%, we get around 83 frames per second on average, gaining 8%. The final game is uh, a recent one, Uncharted 4, 1080p i settings, this is another DirectX 12 game, native resolution, we get uh, 63 frames per second on average, and with FSR set to quality, numbers go up to uh, 85 frames per second on average, gaining something like 35%. And there you go, the RX 5500 XT in 2023, a card uh, that uh, someone got, for 92 euro dollars and uh, well it's just fine for what it's meant to do again i usually don't talk about uh, pricing or say oh you should buy uh, product a instead of product b no it is what it is and you make of it what you uh, want to make but uh, well the numbers speak for themselves i'm not gonna get uh, into the um, all uh, image upscaling techniques that are uh, proprietary to NVIDIA or the one from AMD which is an open source kind of thing, a free use kind of thing and uh, well these are the numbers I think they are uh, okay for uh, 2023 and again 92 euro dollars 1080p high settings do you really need to spend 300 dollars or more well you uh, you decide. It's up to you. If you enjoy this video, leave it a thumbs up, because I appreciate when your thumbs are pointing up. Subscribe to the channel down here, click that subscribe button, because your support is very much appreciated. 
You can follow me on social media where I post uh, social media nonsense and that's pretty much it as always. Thank you very much for watching this consumer friendly video that you just did and uh, until my next one please do and as always take care.